with Quantify, uh, performs uh, uh, develop machine learning solutions for other companies. As a company, you can see two main ways to uh, apply AI. One is to develop custom build tools, so custom applications for you, but for your business. And the other one is to use off-the-shelf AI, off AI solutions, so, so solutions that already exist. So when do you do such choices? We see, and this is a big part of our activity, that companies that decide to go on a specific development, so develop their own AI solution, uh, have specific constraints. So the constraint they have, or the asset they have, is they have data. They have data that is unique to their company and that they can leverage. So this is, for example, customer data, operational data, but uh, how you produce your goods or services. Sometimes it's also a constraint because the, the, the data of the company is so specific that they have to have their own solution so uh, they can uh, uh, leverage it with artificial intelligence. And the goal of very often is to gain a competitive advantage, however you define it. So this is really on how you use artificial intelligence to uh, support your strategy. And this is one of uh, the pillars of our activity at Cantify. One short example, Moniz. Uh, so I met, for the little story, I met Moniz at one of the, um, the software Brussels events a few, a few, few years ago. Moniz uh, is, for those who, uh, of you who use meal vouchers, uh, meal vouchers are those uh, vouchers you use to go to the restaurant that are paid for by your company. And, uh, and uh, Moniz was one of the latest players in the industry. And what they want in their strategy is really about um, providing a good experience to their customers. And Moniz uh, decided and wanted to provide personalized restaurant recommendations and we met we developed uh, solutions for them and now on their applications you can have wherever you are a recommendation of a restaurant that corresponds to your taste but also to some of the things you may want to discover so the second way you you want you can use AI and, and as an SME I think it's also very very relevant uh, because uh, some of the SMEs um, have less resources less time and sometimes less data as well is to use off-the-shelf solutions um, the goal is here is to be more efficient and uh, to yeah, to be to have uh, to use solutions that are already uh, plug and play and can help you to go faster or to be better because they are leveraging AI. Um, is Fin uh, a solution that we developed that uh, can parse that can extract read a document um, of uh, an invoice like a, like a human can do, and uh, the the goal of Fin is to be able to read a document read an invoice, however the format and to be able to extract uh, some key data uh, that uh, many companies need to, need to parse, which is the VAT number, the, the amount, et cetera. So this is the dashboard, but this is just uh, to illustrate the content. Thank you. Basically, what we do at uh, UWARE, we merge three different worlds, three very different worlds. One is robotics, the other one is AI, and the other one is underwater. I do believe that robots will be the next revolution. And actually, it's not only robots, it's mainly smart robots. And actually, uh, what will happen in a few months and a few years, uh, in some case, we will see a lot of robots everywhere. The first thing we will see in terms of transportation, it's uh, smart cars and automatic autonomous cars. Um, but actually, we have to remember that 72% of the Earth is covered by ocean. But actually, something for sure, is that 95% of the ocean is today totally undiscovered, unexplored. So 95%, so that means uh, we know the borderlines, we know the seashores, but after that, uh, it's totally empty. So this is the first product uh, we are launching. Um, it's called the U1. Um, and actually, all the words are very important in the sentence. So it's smart, uh, because actually it's autonomous. Uh, we call that an AUV, that means Autonomous Underwater Vehicle. It's very important because in the underwater uh, environment, we have no GPS, we have no communication, no Bluetooth, no Wi-Fi, nothing. The robot, the drone, uh, has many cameras and can map all these environments in real time. Uh, that means we, have no, we, we need to be able to discover and uh, recover and recognize different things. So if you take all this uh, system from Microsoft, from uh, Amazon, or from, uh, from Google, if you send a picture of anything, you will see that actually if it's something above the Earth, uh, actually all this algorithm will recognize with 95, 99% of accuracy. They will tell you that it's a chair, it's a dog, or it's a cat. If you take a propeller from a boat, if you take any kind of fish, 
they will tell you that it's a fish, but they, they won't tell you if it's a fish uh, very uh, angry or if it's a, a dangerous one. They won't be able to make the difference between a dolphin or a shark, for instance. So that's something we have to work on uh, at the moment at uh, UWARE, and we are processing thousands and thousands of pictures to do actually what Google and, uh, and Amazon are doing for all the things we are seeing now, but we are doing that for the underwater world. We all know that now it's impossible to dive without seeing a plastic bottles uh, in the seabed. So that's just uh, incredible. Uh, we have to do something. Uh, humans, uh, it's pretty difficult, so robots will be able to do that. Another very important thing is uh, today you cannot insure a boat. So if we take uh, like a super tanker, 300 meters long, you can't insure this boat and the boat cannot go uh, on the sea if you don't inspect the hull. Obviously, it's a job that a robot can do. 99, 95% sorry, of the, tra the internet traffic goes through cables that are actually under the Atlantic Ocean. We had the problem um, in the Mediterranean Sea uh, two years ago with the cable uh, between France and Algeria. And Algeria is uh, just uh, dependent on France for the internet access. And they had no internet access during a few days just because of that, just because of something like that. Seabed analysis, actually we have a mission uh, that will start in, uh, with a prototype in March this year uh, to find in the North Sea uh, a U-boat, a German a submarine. Um, it's totally uh, unknown at the moment and actually that's the first mission, professional mission we have to find it. Only a robot can do the job. There is no visibility, there is a lot of ships uh, above and you can't send divers. You don't have the right to send divers over there, so the robots are the only one uh, able to do it. Thank you. What we do, we transform public and private data to help our clients to get insights and taking actions about their counterparties. RegTech is about regulation and technologies, is the use of technologies to help uh, regulated and regulations requirements. So that it's a part of the fintech, where fintech just are, be, uh, are not with banks, we help banks and financial institutions to do and to deliver their regulatory requirements. We work today with data, so we have a big data uh, old style uh, activity. We merge data, we clean data, we enrich data, and then we use uh, machine learning. Old-fashioned machine learning, why? Just to explain what we, we predict. So that uh, we have built uh, three solutions. The first one is the get one. The idea there is to link companies and people together on the worldwide uh, scale. So that we can just identify one entity, the group behind the entity, the links within the shareholders, and define these UBOs. Quite interesting today to detect uh, who is uh, the beneficial owners of companies. We, we have developed also predictive models. It was the base of the company and when, when it started, just to predict the company main events, could be bankruptcy, could be property to be sold, could be uh, growth today. And then we, we build a platform where our clients can just see these risks and take actions with these risks about know your business and anti-money laundering solutions. Well, what I can say is that deep learning, despite being scientific or not, uh, is still driving a huge amount of business value, and that's what I'm going to show you tonight. Um, so indeed, um, there is, um, I mean, so many things today that thanks to that non-science technology called deep learning is possible today, uh, because anything that touches images, text, video, speech, that used to be done by people can now be tackled by machines. And that's going to help, you know, a machine take on some tasks that used to be done by people to only left the tasks that are the most complex to people. And so, in a sense, rehumanize the humanity because you, we leave to machine what machine can do best and we leave to people what we can do best, which is dealing with emotion, creativity, and relationship with other people. So how do we help companies achieve that? We help educate them. We help them understand what's possible with AI today within their own organization with workshops and also lectures from like a few hours to like four days. Then we also help companies integrate custom AI solution if they have data or help them also develop an AI strategy if they want to acquire some data assets. 
And we also, over the time, we've built some solution of the shelves, like also uh, a document data extraction system automatically. Companies have to deal with thousands of emails per day. Um, that's where we can also come in to help companies understand, uh, to, 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 to automate the understanding of the email, the prioritization of the email, classification, dispatching of that email, all the way to automatically generate an answer. Everything that touches document processing, when people had to, in the past, look at documents and make decisions based on that, well, wh whether they are invoices, receipts, or as you can see, um, car crash forms that used to be manually um, um, treated can now be automatically treated. And when you can imagine that some insurance companies have like hundreds of thousands of those documents to treat per year, it helps them quite a lot to improve their operation. Invoice anomaly detection can drive also a serious amount of uh, revenue for insurance companies that used to be done by people that now can be done by machines. We, don't, we not only work on text and documents, we also work on images where we can, in this case, uh, um, register all the logos of brands that are in, um, in, in, in the press or newspaper so that people don't have to do that boring and repetitive task anymore. Here, this is like uh, satellite imagery where we helped an NGO in Africa identify where the tuberculosis hotspots were so that they could send um, doctors in some areas only and focus on them. And how did we help them? We helped them identify where the mines were. We were, uh, helped them identify the, the quality of the settlements, that were they new or old, how far from the ro roads they were, uh, and then how rich or poor each streets of a city were. And so if you combine all of these information, thanks to deep learning, you can then uh, combine it into a model to help the doctor focus on the, on the areas that requires them the most. Thank you very much.